Hello, Des from ProTrade and yet again I'm with my colleague Alan and Alan I think you're going to introduce what we're talking about today. That's right Des. Um, today we're going to be speaking about different types of abrasives and different hole patterns on the abrasives. But first Des, I wanted to ask why do you feel these videos are important? Well, Alan, ProTrade's been in business now for just shy of 50 years. And during that period of time, we've managed to get together loads of industry knowledge. And I think little videos like we're making today are a great way of passing that information onto customers, particularly the customers that buy their stuff online, because I think it allows them to pick the right products and get them right first time. So Des, we'll go into the, the first question. Um, why do abrasives have holes in them? Right, nice and easy. So the idea of having holes in an abrasive is that whilst you're going through the sanding process, the dust created is drawn through the abrasive disc, it goes through the corresponding hole in the backing pad, and then it's sucked through the machine, preferably using a dust extractor. So to answer your question succinctly, Alan, it's the dust extraction. So Des, I see you've got a blue disc there with no holes at all. Uh, what would be the application usage this of Right, so not all Velcro discs come with holes in. And typically we sell this kind of product without holes to customers that are working with metal. And the reason that they tend to request products without holes is that metal can have burrs and sharp edges on, which when they catch on the holes in a hold Velcro abrasive disc, can tear it. Right. So they prefer to have discs without holes. Now, I'm at pains to say that just because they're using a disc without holes doesn't mean to say that they're not using any dust extraction whatsoever, because lots of their sanding process will be done either in a sanding booth or you can get benches, which for want of a better word, are dust extraction benches, which have a grid top, and that grid top is connected to a dust extractor. And therefore, as you're sanding, the dust gets sucked through the bench and then out through a pipe to a hopper. So what uh, different types of uh, Velcro abrasives are there? Right, Alan, so you're asking really the materials, aren't you, I think? Mm. So in essence, what you tend to find is, is there are two types. You get coated abrasives and you get mesh or net abrasives. Now, you'll hear me referring to mesh and net. In essence, they're the same product, but some people call them net, some people call them mesh, okay? But how you make a coated abrasive is you have a base layer, which is typically paper or film. Then you have a layer of resin. The grit gets put onto that resin and then there's usually another layer of resin which then holds the grit in place. And sometimes they'll put things like stearate coatings on that top layer as well to stop things cl like clogging and heat build up. That's a coated product. When it comes to the net abrasives, I'm not sure really if, uh, if the camera can see this, but a net abrasive is a net base and you can see all the thousands of perforations in the base material. And just like I described with the coated abrasive, essentially there is a base of net, a layer of resin, a grit goes on top of the resin, and then there's another final coat of resin over the top of that. So those are the two types of Velcro abrasive. So what are the advantages to the uh, coated abrasives you've got there? Right, well, typically, Coated abrasives are tougher. They're a, they're a really resilient abrasive material. And that comes into its own, particularly when you're sanding very hard substrates like metal and hardwood, but also edge sanding, because of course you've got smaller surface area where your disc has to sand. And if I can try and explain that using one of my crude demonstrations, if you imagine this is the base of the abrasive disc, and this here is a piece of grit. When the grit is plonked onto that, that resin, it has a really firm and stable base. 
and therefore the grit resists coming away. So that's what makes them so tough. So that's the advantage of a coated abrasive. That would bring me on to what is the disadvantage of coated abrasive? Right, well, <laughs> perfectly described by this 15 hole disc. When you buy a coated abrasive and you're looking for dust extraction, the first thing you've got to do is to pick uh, an abrasive disc with the right amount of holes in to suit your sander. The next thing you have to do is you have to actually line those holes up when it goes onto the backing pad. Now that's not really a big deal, but it's still something that you have to do. Yes. Okay, um, that can also be a slight problem if of course you've got more than one brand of sander which has different holes in each backing pad, because then you might have to double your stock keeping. Of course, yeah. Okay, and then lastly, when you get to very fine grits, they're prone, more prone to clogging up, especially on sticky substrates like resinous woods, paints and fillers. So following on from the coated abrasives, what would be the advantages of the, the mesh product? Right, well, if we look at the, 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 the mesh and net abrasives, the first thing that you'll see is the structure of the product, which then really means they have unrivaled dust extraction with literally thousands of little holes on the uh, disc itself. Nothing can compete in terms of dust extraction. And the other thing is, they're really convenient because you don't have to line any holes up. They'll go on any brand of sander, they'll give excellent dust extraction and there's no holes to line up. So that, that, that is, that is the, the, the best, the biggest advantage of net abrasives. Um, the other thing as well is because dust extraction is so efficient, when you do get to the finer grades, they're less likely to clog. Brilliant. And what, what would you put forward as the disadvantages of a, a mesh product? Again, it comes down to the backing material. So they're more prone to tearing and more prone to grit loss when you're sanding edges. And again, if I can do a little demonstration of that, if you can imagine this is a, a filament or a strand of the net material, and this again is a piece of grit, the grit doesn't have so much surface area to bond to. So when you're sanding edges, the grit can be stripped and of course it gets pinged off. Oh. That's what causes premature um, uh, grit loss for net abrasives. Now, I don't want it to sound that bad. They don't ping off uh, you know, very easily, but they're more prone to it than a coated abrasive disc. And lastly, the only other thing about net abrasives is they can be quite hard um, on backing pads. And what I mean by that is, is they can cause your backing pads to wear out prematurely. Okay. And it's probably uh, best that I try and describe this um, using this sander and this abrasive disc. So this is the backing pad of the sander. With a coated abrasive, it gives you a really nice heat barrier between the surface being sanded and the heat going through to the backing pad. And why that's important is, as heat builds up, it heats up these little plastic hooks which hold the Velcro abrasive on, and they soften with heat. And as they become soft, they're more prone to falling off, especially when you take the pads off. Lose too many of those, and it renders your backing pad useless because you can't stick your abrasives on it. Now, sounds bad, doesn't it? But there is a very low cost solution, and it's by using one of these. So this is a protection pad, sometimes referred to as a pad saver. And what that does is it's a sacrificial product, really. And that goes in between the backing pad, I'm not gonna carefully place this on, and the net abrasive there. So the thing about that is, even if you do lose some hooks on this, they're a fraction of the cost compared to a backing pad. So it's a good solution. And can the pad saver you, you spoke about there be used with coated abrasives as well as the mesh products? Absolutely it can. And in fact, we recommend our customers buy a protection pad when they're using coated and net abrasives. It saves you money. So Des, do uh, uh, abrasive pads uh, of the same diameter use the same hole patterns uh, across the industry? Right, so what I think you're asking is, if you've got a 150mm abrasive, is the hole pattern the same for all 150mm yes. abrasives? No, <laughs> is the answer. Um, and here's a a prime example but to give you a little bit of background on that Alan um, 
The most popular abrasive disc sold in the UK currently is 150 mil diameter, and I myself have counted eight different hole types. Blimey. So no, the the, uh, the answer to that is unfortunately not, which is one of the reasons we're making this video. So you mentioned there's, uh, you, you've personally counted eight different hole patterns on 150 mil. Yeah. With uh, so many different ones available, is it essential you always match the holes with your vacuum pad? We'd say it's desirable, but not always essential. And rather than waffle, it's probably easier that I try and explain that by using this sander here and this abrasive. So if you can see, this is a air sander with six holes on the vacuum pad. That is our GLS3 hole pattern. I'm just going to attach this disc. So as you can see there, the holes in the abrasive disc line up perfectly with the holes in the backing pad. So that will give you excellent dust extraction and a wonderful surface finish. That's perfect. Now, if I can just change that for another disc, which has got more holes in it, you'll see this Velcro disc has got 15 holes in it. And I'm gonna attach that to this six hole sander. It's not perfect, but what you'll see is the six holes around the middle, they line up perfectly. So you'll get really good dust extraction from that. But what you'll also see is the backing pad behind these outer holes. Yes. Now what happens is during the sanding process, Alan, dust builds up in these little pockets here. And eventually, as you continue sanding, all that dust slowly migrates its way under the abrasive and what that causes is it causes the grit to stand proud from other grit on the abrasive and then that can cause surface imperfections because it gives you what's classed as rogue scratches which are little pigtail marks in your surface finish that's not good and that's why typically we say it's better off to have fewer holes in the abrasive disc than the backing pad rather than more holes in the abrasive disc than the backing pad and if I can just give you one more example. If I pick this machine up here, you'll see this has got 15 holes on, okay? And now if I pick up this six hole abrasive again, I'm just gonna attach though this disc here. So you'll see that the six holes line up perfectly. So you'll get excellent dust extraction, but you'll also get a really good surface finish because the holes on the backing pad around the outside are covered up. So there's no possible way for dust to get behind the abrasive disc. So that's why we think this is perfectly acceptable. Okay, so as a rule of thumb, what we say is if you can line the holes up, line them up. But if you can't line them up, cover them up. What have we done at ProTrade to make it easier for customers to ensure they get the correct abrasive for their machine? Right, well what we've done Alan is painstakingly we've gone through every random orbit sander that we sell, every backing pad and every Velcro abrasive disc. And if for example you look on the Velcro abrasives it tells you the total number of holes and it gives you a hole pattern code and that then will correlate with the machine which will say you need a GLS3 hole pattern you can then look on the abrasive to see a GLS3 hole pattern abrasive, and that means they'll win work together. Thank you for that, Des. I've certainly learned a lot about abrasives, and hopefully our customers will find this very helpful as well. If any customers do have any questions, please do drop them in the comments box below.